Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast. I am a woman on a mission to help you get a working Zettelkasten on your table beside you, a minimalist Zettelkasten that provides all of the functionality of a real Zettelkasten. It is a real Zettelkasten, but it's coming together in the fewest number of steps. Well, tonight is a question night. We have only one real lesson left as soon as the questions die down, but I still have some questions left and one tonight in particular is um, someone wanted to know, could I say again, what is a foundation card? We covered them a little bit quickly, so I will take some time uh, today to go back through and talk about exactly what is a foundation card. I have another request for a glossary, which is a good idea, and I'm also putting one of those together, so that will be coming up as well, so that all the terms that we've used will be clearly stated. So the foundation card is a, a device that lets you control the shape of your Zettelkasten. A Zettelkasten is primarily made up of cards that come either from your reading or watching videos or sometimes your own personal reflection and they are an idea comes to bear in your system. These ideas oftentimes begin life on a bib card. And we have a bib box, which contains our bib cards, which you'll recall are the cards that talk about the books that we're reading, the videos that we're watching, the lectures we're listening to. Any source material goes on a bib card. We set up some rules for shaping a bib card, and that was that we, on the front side, we included the title and the author, our reason for wanting to read the book or watch the video and we gave the bib card a nickname so that we could reference it on main cards then we turned it over and as we reviewed the material we took notes and when we made a mark the page number in the book or what time in the video and we made a note from the source and possibly our own thoughts or ideas that added at that time but often just the ideas that we got from the book well after any point in time, you could do it as you read and as you go along. Some people prefer to make their their notes from their bib cards at the very end, after they finish the book. I tend to like them to make them on a daily basis as I read. Those ideas are what mainly populates our main box. So most of the cards in our main box will come about from the ideas that we've read about in those books and in those videos and in those other sources where we got our information and our ideas. When it came time to place a new card into the system, the new card, we set up a rule that the new card got to choose where it wanted to go in the midst of the existing cards. Well, sometimes we would find that the new card doesn't have any place logical to go. And that's where a foundation card can come in handy because a foundation card can set a place for cards to attach. And in fact, at the earliest stages of our Zettelkasten, we began with foundation cards to set up the first structure. So at this point, it becomes a little bit too abstract to just talk about it. I need to show you the cards and show you which ones were foundation cards and which ones came from the reading so we can cement this concept of a foundation card. So come on over to the down facing camera and I'll show you what I mean. The first cards that we added to our Zettelkasten were foundation cards. They were the cards that in my system got the numbers 1, 2, and 3. They came about from looking at the books that we'd chosen, which were as widely spaced as possible in our reading plan. And then with each of those books, we tried to think about, well, what is the most general area that this book is an example of? And that's what gave us our first basic foundation cards. Then from there, we did a little bit more foundational work. We took these foundational areas and we gathered an additional few books from each of them to see if we could establish how broad and how many subject areas within those main headings that we had in our immediate reading plan ahead of us. So we created additional foundational cards. For example, in my second foundation card, which was on business, 
I want to set LilyPub up on a solid business foundation, I identified four sub areas that I would wanted to read about in the fairly near future. I created foundation cards for each of those areas and they all ended up together on a directory card that went with our first foundation card. So those sub areas for me in business were setting realistic goals, being a strong leader, setting LilyPub up on a sound accounting foundation, and hoping for LilyPub to be a vibrant community. That was as far as we took foundation cards, and that gave me a structure for my reading, in particular in this area of business. And from that point, my next step was to take each one of my cards that I had made from my bib cards from the book that I was reading, which was Dan Sullivan's book, The Gap and the Game, which was simply the first book in my reading plan. So now with my foundation cards in place, I could take the main cards that I had made from the Dan Sullivan book and figure out where I wanted to place them. For example, this one, Strive for Ideals, Don't Measure by Them, went beautifully in the area of goal setting. And in fact, the other two cards that I made from that same book, not surprisingly, also related to goal setting because it's the same book. And those two cards each wanted this card from my reading to be their parent. And so that card got a directory card as well. So now we can see the whole structure that we've created in this branch, this number two branch. Here we had this as a foundation card and each of these were foundation cards. So you can see how the foundation cards shape the structure. And then they also give us a place to hang the book that we were reading off one of the foundation cards. Other books that were in my reading plan provide information that would go in each of these branches. So the main thing that I would want you to know is that a foundation card is a main card. It is a type of main card that allows you to set structure in your Zettelkasten. It can fill any kind of a gap for you. If ever you have a card that you want to place that came off your reading and it doesn't have a logical place to attach it to, you can consider making a foundation card that will provide an attachment point for that new card. So now let's take a look again for a review then. How do you create a foundation card? Let's review those steps. So let's review the steps in creating a foundation card. So in a regular main card, what you would have in this first area is the information that you got from your source. Instead of the information you got from your source, for a foundation card, you might just say something like, I want to learn more about this subject area and then give your purpose. So in this example, I want to learn more about business planning and goal setting so that I can formulate attainable goals. Then beyond that, everything else is just like a regular main card. You're going to provide your feelings and your reactions. My feeling and reaction was that I believe that planning and goal setting is important in any endeavor, but is especially important for business. Then I would supply my source, which in this case was a personal reflection, and I supplied the date. And then, of course, the all-important tagline, which is how you're going to index. Business goals celebrated will fuel my business. And that's the, the keywords that I indexed it under. Okay, well, I hope this helps. And uh, let me know if, it, if you still have open questions, and I will take another stab at it. Or if you have any other questions at all regarding the entire series that we've been working through on the minimalist Zettelkasten, I'm open to answering any of your questions. And we have one more step that we're going to close it all up with, um, possibly tomorrow if we don't have a bunch of questions. And uh, we'll wind up the series on the minimalist Zettelkasten. Thank you for viewing. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.